Hi there. Welcome to the Call to Cinema. This is my uh, my youngest. This is my son Wes. Hello. <clears throat> was visiting here for a few days, and I'm so glad. Today we are doing the Code Red Collection. Uh, over the last few uh, few weeks, I've been doing uh, collection overviews of pretty much everything that I uh, like that I got. I've done my Scream Factory. I've done Vinegar Syndrome. Uh, I have a Vinegar Syndrome. Once the Vinegar Syndrome stuff comes, I'll be doing an unboxing of that stuff, and uh, that's going to be a very different unboxing. It's my uh, Cult of Cinema After Dark. <clears throat> so let's start right now. So let's do first. So because, unfortunately, you're supposed to come out at Christmas time. Yes. And hey, B-Movie. And you never got to uh, to come because uh, I, weather permitting and stuff like that. I caught the flu. <laughs> <clears throat> Bad flu. Hey, Jason. Hello. So he's had my Christmas gift since then. Yes. So... I guess one one piece at a time. <clears throat> so first off, hey and ready, welcome. We're doing the Code Red collection, and I'm showing some Christmas gift stuff that I got here that I'm super excited about. I'm probably gonna keep this in the box till I get to Morocco, you know. Probably, yeah. <clears throat> probably good idea. Hey, Javit. So this is the Toonie Tears NECA collection of Pinhead, and I haven't had any of these Toonie Tears ones. Like. Hey Greg, I've had a few NECA ones, but I love, what I really love about this, <coughs> what really stands out, is the blackness in the eyes. Look at that. Isn't that freaky? Oh, that is really weird. <clears throat> so look at that. Well. Look how close. That's kind of cool and creepy. <clears throat> oh yeah, we're doing a total, complete code red tonight. And I am stoked about this. This is my first Toonie Terrors, but it's not going to be my last. That's this was Mimi's idea, actually. She showed up a surprise with us on Kabuto. We were doing the Christmas part. Ah. <clears throat> and this, when I first saw this, I just thought it was like a, I thought that was a case. Hey, Mark, welcome. Hey, Alan. Hello. <clears throat> so, I thought this was a blockbuster case. I didn't notice right away. So I said, well, maybe you found me like a, a movie. That's my son, Wes. Hello. <laughs> but this is actually a, a board game. <clears throat> A blockbuster board game, kind of like think about in the old days of blockbuster. So, actually, kind of cool. You can see the uh, the board right there. So I'm guessing it's kind of a trivia type game. Yeah. I'm gonna guess. And I remember going to blockbuster mm. as a kid for hours while you would browse <laughs> everything. That is in true. The entire store. In detail, <coughs> you had to read the back of everything. This is really, really cool. Uh, I never didn't know this existed. I used to go to Blockbuster all the time. I love that it actually looks like a Blockbuster case. I know. That was the kind of thing that <coughs> caught our attention when we saw it in the store. And we were like, Dad would love this. Does anybody have this? We'll find no. out. <laughs> hey, Ragman. You gotta be. <coughs> for hours. Seriously, for hours. <laughs> I need the dive, Brian. I'm getting the messages here <clears throat> a couple seconds before they're coming up on screen. Really? Yeah, I noticed that. Oh, that's right. We used to do that. <clears throat> yeah, the VHS case. That's what I loved about it. I thought it was a VHS case. I thought, okay, made the fence uh, a blockbuster movie at a. <clears throat> oh, you have to come throat. So, get ready for the first. Should we do the DVDs first or the Blu rays? Okay, so we're going to go every, over every Code Red. We're going to go through the DVDs and the Blu-rays. If you've seen any of them, <coughs> Wes, or is there any you're kind of curious about, <coughs> go up along the way. Hey, 13 Wolfman, welcome. Hello. I got my son Wes with me tonight, <coughs> and we're going to do Code Red stuff. I haven't hey, been Jacob. here for like a year and a half. It's been like a year and a half since I was last here. Yep. And on the video. It was here in the summer, actually. Out. <clears throat> now you're in your <clears throat> was it second third semester? Sec I'm in my second semester of my second year. I'm halfway through my degree. These are mine. I don't collect DVDs and Blu-rays. <laughs> you have some. I have like. I gave you some too. Yeah, I know, but I don't like keep a lot around. Anything we have is like in the living room. <clears throat> you have a you have a nice collection. You have a good collection of small collection. What's a nice collection? Yeah, most of it is not mine. 
So the first one we got here, <coughs> have you ever seen this one? No. This is heard of it, though. actually the first Code Red movie that I ever picked up. Th yep, yeah, this is the Korean expert yeah, right here. Yeah, yeah. <coughs> Called Burning? Burning. What's it about? You don't have any code right, Jason? Well, maybe some of these will convince you. <laughs> maybe some of them won't. Maybe some do the opposite. I guess we should give a little history of code red first. Hey, Indy Phantom, welcome. Indy Phantom, are you over? Indy Phantom's over. Where's it at again? Japan? China? You're over somewhere. And it's is now. over somewhere. <clears throat> I gotta get this live up so I can see the comments too. It's got Glenn from Mocking Dead. Oh, cool. Oh, I think I know what you're talking about. Is it Teenage Hitchhikers? I don't think that's it. <clears throat> so this is the first Code Red one I got. Uh, a little bit of history. Code Red is done by uh, an interesting individual. <laughs> it's based on a short story by Haruki Marakine. Yeah, I don't know what you're talking about now. <clears throat> so this is the very first is physical media streaming more, I would say. I, it kind of depends. It kind of <laughs> depends. It kind of depends. I prefer, like, I like the convenience of streaming because I'm kind of a minimalist at heart, so I don't want to keep a ton of stuff around. But, like, I just, I can't, like, there's some things that I have to have physically. Like, copy of Dolls, gotta have it physically. Has to be there physically. It's, like, the best. Yeah. See, where's, where's that? It's in quarantine country right now. Oh, China. no. <clears throat> keep safe. Principal of school over there just got promoted. Really? Yeah. Oh, cool. So this movie was the first, very first one I bought. Uh, AB movie. So Teenage Hitchhiker is a uh, <clears throat> mid '70s film. I think around early '70s, probably around '74, '75. Uh, <clears throat> I actually was at a video store. Remember that like Nintendo store in St. John's? Yeah. So they had like a few movies like there, <clears throat> and uh, this was one. I picked it up randomly because it said. Teenage Hitchhiker on it, uh, and it had like a, a, you know, I wouldn't say like a big cast, but you know, that's Sandra Peabody, uh, Nikki Lynn's in it, uh, <clears throat> Chris Jordan was in Last House on the Left, so you know, was it Sandra, no, Confession of a Young American Housewife, Sandra Castle was in Last House on the Left, so, hey there, uh, I had to pick this up, teaching Rome, doing online courses, that's a smart move. But it's the very first one. I didn't even know it was Code Red until I got home and I saw like, because it doesn't have the Code Red logo on the on the back like you normally see. Yeah. On the side, it was, it's on the back. And it's, it's like really small like yeah. right there. So you got to look. So this is, not I'm guessing this is probably an early Code Red release. Am I familiar with Videoscope Magazine? I am, in fact, actually. <clears throat> I've had a few Videoscopes. Next up is Canuxploitation. You guys like Canuxploitation? You guys know I, I love Canuxploitation. You haven't seen this movie yet, have you? I have to share this movie. This is insane. <clears throat> so this is Ghostkeeper. And Ghostkeeper is about a Wendigo. <clears throat> um, so you know what a Wendigo is? Yes. <clears throat> All right. So you're, you're not going to see the Wendigo well in this movie. This is a very, so this is a very Canadian film. How Canadian is this film? Do you want to know how Canadian this, Canadian this film is? So these people are on skidoos. Oh, my God. Going out in the... Uh, <laughs> you got Ghostkeeper. Oh, you see Ghostkeeper. Nice. Did you like it? <clears throat> they're going out in the... Uh, basically skidooing. And uh, their skidoos break down. So they're forced to stay at this abandoned hotel. Okay. And there may be a win to go. Maybe. Maybe. Honestly, you say Wendigo, and I cannot help but think about that video game. <laughs> what was it called? Until Dawn or something? Until Dawn. Yeah. <clears throat> now, it won't look that good. Great cover art. Skidoo. Oh, <laughs> Skidoo. Okay, so they're like, there's like, you, it's like, um, like a, a snow, it's a snowmobile. It's like. A snowmobile. Yeah, it's a type of snowmobile. <laughs> so, yeah, uh, it's a type, here in, in Canada, uh, it's a, it's one of those things like a like, snowmobile is called a skidoo because there's a there's brand a right brand, yeah it's like one, it's like how you call like cotton swabs q-tips yeah it's exactly the same type of concept good <laughs> but anyway ghost keeper a lot of fun did you like it uh 13 wolf man <laughs> like in one of the x-men comics well yeah and the alpha flight too right but no doesn't look like that doll <laughs> not good makeup in that one this one so next up is a classic film hey william Hello. And classic film, <laughs> yeah, that's, that's really stretching it. Uh, this is Fred Williamson's like uh, self-produced like, film, Death Journey. 
Fred Williamson was a uh, was a black exploitation actor, and uh, nice. Uh, and he uh, he wears a lot of suits, and uh, he smokes, and. All the ladies, the hammer, exactly, that's his, that's his nickname. All the ladies love Fred Williamson because he cannot resist them. Freeze Fred Williamson. Look at that. See, how could any lady resist that? Oh, boy, I don't know. <clears throat> so this is kind of a fun film. Uh, it's not a good film. I'm not going to lie to you. Like, it's not a good film. I watched it, and I'm like, like there's a great cast in it. It's, uh, yeah, it was great in Vigilante. It's great in a lot of films, actually. Uh, <clears throat> but uh, the movie's a little... It's very low budget. Like, people, you've seen it, right? You know what I mean. It's very low budget. It's a fun film. It's definitely a black exploitation, but it's like on the lower, it's on the poverty road black exploitation stuff. It was super fun. Oh, he was a football player. Okay. <clears throat> Which I forgot to mention. So that's why you guys got to catch me up on these things. Now, this is, the one, this is the one with the big cast. This is the first one, actually. Did you see the Japanese version of Less on Fire? No, I'm not super familiar with like Japanese stuff. That's my uh, my daughter so into Japanese stuff. Neither of us <clears> are <throat> familiar with anime, by the way. Super mean Johnny Barrows. Look at this. Look at the cast on this. Look, it's got Roddy McDowell. Oh. From Fright Tonight. Stuart oh. Whitman, from uh, The Prowler. Okay. Leon Isaac Kennedy, who was the star of the uh, Penitentiary films. Okay. And Elliot Gould. The famous Canadian actor who was in things like, uh, well, MASH. Oh. <clears throat> and uh, the, the movie. Okay, okay. A and he was in the, uh, the Silent Partner. <clears throat> this, this one's, actually, this one's actually more fun than that. Like, Death Journey is, is, is cool, but this one has such a cast. I mean, uh, <clears throat> Stuart Whitman, I love Stuart Whitman and everything he's in. Look, look, this is Stuart Whitman right here. Very 70s hairdo. Yeah. <laughs> so, extremely fun movie. This is part of their Fred Williamson signature collection, which means movies produced by Fred Williamson. Did you see the sequel to Death Race 2000? It depends on which one you mean. Because there's a reboot series, and then there's a one that they did later on. <clears throat> I like Bob and Carol and Ted and Alice. I, I actually like that film. We're going to disagree on that one, Brian. But that's okay. I listen. I don't. Okay, listen. I don't. The movies, I okay, I just really love the show. Like, no matter how much the movie is, like, pretty okay, it will never, I will never not be disappointed when someone's like, oh, MASH, and then they're not referring to the show. Oh. Uh, the big score. I don't have the big score. I don't think I got the big score. No, I don't, actually. But I do have this. I want to cast. We got Running Hot. And I don't think I've watched this one since I got it. Uh, but it's it's uh, got Eric Stoltz in this. And I'm a huge Eric Stoltz fan. Do you have any Code Red Jallos? Well, we'll get there, Ricky. Well, some, see, uh, Code Red is hard to get around here, Jason. <coughs> but there was a sale a while back on, uh, on some Code Red titles on uh, Screen Archives. And I picked up some then. Uh, uh, and it was a DVD sale, only sale. Greetings from Kurdistan. Hey, Hello. welcome there. That cover's atrocious. Are you serious? Look how cute she is. <clears throat> the show was better. I love Alan Alda. Can I just say that right now? <laughs> yeah, Alan Alda is a national treasure, man. An international treasure. And yes, the, mo the TV series is better than the film. It's so much better. <clears throat> Eric Stoltz? I'd have to look. Maybe. And Code Red? Could be. Dead Pit. So, do I have the kill reflex? I don't think so. So this is Dead Pit. Uh, when this came out on, on, on VHS, the original, uh, you there's so see where these eyes are. Yeah. There was two little like like lights that were that they were like two little red lights, and you were be able to press right around here, and the lights would light, his eyes would light up. That's really cool. So I was uh, when I when I got this, I was initially hoping. That, hey, maybe it'll be on there. Uh, I'm personally offended. <laughs> no, you're not. I'm just kidding. I'm <clears throat> but this is a good one. This is actually a two-disc edition. Uh, There's a Blu-ray of this one as well, but I just bought to get the DVD because it was there. It was on sale at the time. Let's see two discs. Mm -hmm. And there's like a ton of features on here. 
like a steel gallery and a mini movie. Still so, like a steel gallery. <laughs> it's not a feature, it's like a steel gallery. Oh, come on. Y'all are traitors. <laughs> like, you didn't like mash. You in, in response to Ragman, <laughs> some stuff, yes, I am into the same as my dad, like horror and things. But other stuff, not so much. Yeah, not into westerns. Yeah. Nah, that's a you thing. <laughs> you can stay with that. Mimi likes westerns. Does she? Yes, she does. She uh, her favorite is uh, Magnificent Seven. Okay. <clears throat> not all, but like the more that type. Yeah, yeah. All right, are we ready for the Blu-rays? Because we're going to Blu-rays now. <clears throat> yeah, Dead Pit. Actually, there's a Blu-ray of uh, Code from Dead Pit from Code Red too. I just didn't pick it up. Uh, the DVD was on sale at the time, and it's really hard for me to find Code Red. Never met Magnificent Seven. This might one of my favorite too. Danny Deck Chair. Uh, yeah, I did. I was. It's okay. Cut and run. This. This is. This is pretty good, actually. This is the Diodato, right? Have you seen this this one? This got a great cast. Have I? It, it it's weird. Uh, it's a bit like uh, we go to this like it's not this kind of, this Richard Lynch plays this kind of a uh, almost like a cult leader, almost like a kind of Jim Jones type character. Anybody here see Cut and Run? Yeah, it, it's a it's a bit of a weird film, <clears throat> but really cool. Uh, a lot of violence because it's Rigor, Rigorio Diodato. Uh, one, they made a mistake on this one, actually. Uh, oh, yeah, but, and Ricky, the thing is that Code Red put it out, but if you've ever seen the Code Red stuff, all the Code Red like, spines are numbered. Uh, you see, just look. So this one here oh, yeah. <clears throat> is actually <clears throat> missing the number. So the number's not on this one. I'm not, did anybody else get this one? Do they have numbers on theirs? Jesus. I don't think I've listened to the interview with William Ames. John Steiner's in this. I'm a huge John Steiner fan. So John Steiner is an Italian actor, uh, known for Tenebrae. You, you saw Tenebrae? Did? Yes. Okay. So John Steiner is the TV guy in Tenebrae that is really that has the house that the guy that the author breaks into because they think that the TV guy might be the killer. Oh. You know what I'm talking about, right? Yeah. I really like your books a lot. Yeah. <clears throat> so yeah John Steiner was a, he's been in a lot of stuff uh, so anytime I see him in a movie because he usually Hamley overacts and I don't know if it's really him uh, <clears throat> but uh, okay, really uh, I'll listen to the interview uh, but he uh, maybe it's the dubber that does John Steiner's dubbing uh, but it's uh, it's it's interesting he's, he always seems like he's overacting a lot but in a good way. I, I love his overacting. The Boneyard. So it's got Phyllis Diller and Norman Fell. So guy from like, oh, I don't know, Family Cow. Three's Company. Oh, which Mr. Guy? Roper. Oh my God. <clears throat> yep. So look, it's like a, a poodle type creature. That's upsetting. I uh, I have, I don't know if I've seen this one uh, or haven't seen it in years. I have seen it. Uh, yeah, it's got like Ed Nelson's in this, Norman Fell, uh, Phil Stiller. I hear this is great too. See, I haven't had a chance to watch it. This is the one I haven't had, to wa had a chance to watch yet. So that's the, that's the truth of the matter. When you get a lot of movies, sometimes you'll get, it takes you a while to get to them. <clears throat> but Boneyard. It's a kind of a comedy horror. You hate poodles. <clears throat> it looks kind of like a killer poodle. <clears throat> now this one <clears throat> looks different. I like the cover. Yeah, it has reverse art. Let me just does this one have reverse art? Let me say, let's just check. Oh, so it does. I hate the okay. So this is reverse art. I like the killer pool art better. Yeah, way better. Now, if you buy Code Red releases from a, a, uh, a website called Ronin Flicks, sometimes they'll have exclusives on them. And this one, and what the exclusive usually is, it's, it's a slip cover that you only get if you buy it from Ronin Flicks. You don't get it if you buy it from anywhere else. Okay. So this one came from Ronin Flicks, obviously. Uh, this was gifted to me. Uh, and that is Witchmaker. I utterly adore this cover. 
Look at this cover. Look how cool the artwork is on this cover. I do like the artwork. Unfortunately, Ronin Flix is kind of expensive for, for me, like for shipping and that. So I have not been able to, like, I've fallen in love with their slipcovers, but I haven't been able to buy anything from them. And they got like a s opera slipcover and everything like that, you know, a Derry Jones opera. Yep, Ronan Flix is in. Ronan, like 47 Ronan. Spelled like that. And this is because once you see the inside artwork, then, yeah, this artwork, you know, go with this. <laughs> Gonna go with this artwork. Yeah. Uh, now there is, I think there's an alternate. Is there an alternate art on the inside? Yeah. So there's like, you can get it here just like, like this, but the slip cover does look better. Yeah. Uh, which maker? I don't know if I get a chance to watch it. This, I know LQ Jones. I know this movie. I've seen it, but I don't remember it for life me right now. Uh, that's to be completely blunt and honest. And I've been sitting the same the numbers on these. This is number 152. Or the other number. What's Boneyard's number? One, 162. So we're going to go, we're going backwards in time. We're, we're actually, we're reversing time. Yeah. Are you reading all the stuff? Yeah, there's a rumor going around that Quentin Tarantino is going to direct a new Star Trek movie. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> Which one? The one I just did was, uh, was Witchmaker. Next up is kind of a fun little monster film. Oh, I like the snappers too, but you don't see them in enough nowadays. I think it's just like satisfying when you snap it's <laughs> yeah. like, yes. That is the being. Oh, look at this creature on the cover. I feel like <laughs> it reminds me of something, but I don't know why. So there's Martin Landau, Jose Ferrer, uh, Ruth Buzzy, who is a name that you don't expect to hear with those other names, actually. What's well, the TV show? Dorothy Malone's in this as well. Dorothy Malone. And a, an actor by the name of Kinky Friedman. <clears throat> Kinky. Fun film, too. And this one is number 150. So, kind of cool that they did that. Ah, that's always good, Indy. I'm glad I'm getting that tells you didn't exist. Am I tempting you with any of these? Probably. It's like a bad influence. <laughs> <laughs> Buy movies. <clears throat> oh, you got the Shriek Show one. Code Red got a lot of stuff I like that Shriek Show put out, actually. I've seen Killer Odology. I haven't seen it yet. I hear great stuff about it, Jason. Um, it's one that I want. I love Mountain Copper stuff. Hey, Chris. So this is One Dark Night. It's got Meg Tilly, uh, who was in Cycle 2, okay. and Adam West. Ah. Yeah, who was the mayor in, uh... <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. But mostly his own. He's, he's Batman. One of the great Batmans of all time, actually. Was that, was that the Batman movie that John Glover was in? No, no, he, he was in the Val Kilmer one. Oh. No, this is that, like, that Batman over there. The 60s. Oh, uh, okay, okay. <clears throat> now, this is a fun one. Uh, I liked One Dark Night. I've always really liked this movie, actually. It's it's a really fun film, kind of a supernatural horror. Uh, yeah, because this is the one where they get stuck into the... Because uh, this has a really good cast. E.G. Daly's in this one, I think. Yeah, E.G. Daly's name's right there. Uh, if you like Jason Lives, you like Jason Lives, uh, do, do watch other Friday the 13th movies. On, uh, so Jason Lives is the one where he puts the thing through him and he li lightning hits him. Kind of almost like a comedy type one. You like that one, right? Oh. <laughs> so this is directed by J by Tom McLaughlin, who directed Jason Lives. He wrote and directed this film as well. So if you're a fan of Jason Lives, you're a fan of Tom McLaughlin, uh, then uh, definitely pick this one up. It's a, it's a really fun one with a really good cast. And uh, it's one I've watched uh, quite a few times, actually, especially in the VHS days. Ooh, did you know that existed? <laughs> I feel like I did. <clears throat> All right, you ready for this one, guys? You've seen The Hills Have Eyes. You've seen The Hills of Eyes too, and regretted it. <laughs> yeah, the West wasn't Lady Charlie's lover. You have good, you got a good memory there. Have you yet to see The Hills of Eyes three? Mind Ripper. It actually stars Lance Henriksen from like, uh, well, everything from, you know, he was in uh, Pumpkinhead. He's a dad, dad in Pumpkinhead. Oh, okay. Giovanni Ribisi is in this one, of course. Uh, I guess you know he's in a lot of movies. He's in Friends. He's in Serious Friends. He was the uh, brother of uh, Phoebe. You know, recently no, I was actually right? talking to my coworker, 
about Friends because I have never seen Friends and I don't intend to see, <laughs> that's see, a, see Friends. It's that's a wind ripper. <laughs> So this actually has a brand new 2K scan. Uh, I don't. I've I watched this one back in the VHS days, but I don't think I've seen it since then. Uh, great cast though. Uh, Natasha Wagner is in this one. Uh, you saw Urban Legend, right? Probably. Uh, Urban Legend starts off. Uh, if I remember, it's okay. Uh, but uh, I, I really had to give it, get a rewatch before I actually uh, got to uh, I'll actually give you an honest opinion on it. Because it's been a long time, <clears throat> but uh, Natasha Wagner played the uh, the girl at the beginning of Urban Legend, the one who's driving the car, and the Brad Dourif is this like creepy gas station attendant, and he's trying to get her attention and trying to get her to come into the gas station, but she kind of freaks out and thinks he's creepy, so she runs back to the car and takes off. What he's trying to tell her, he's got a big stutter, is that there's somebody in the back seat of her car. Uh... <clears throat> So, and also, and this is John Deal. And I mentioned John Deal recently. John Deal is an incredibly good actor. He starred in, like, the first, he was one of the stars of the first few seasons of Miami Vice. Uh, but uh, I know him really well for the, for playing a, for playing the serial killer in Angel, uh, which was, he did an extremely creepy, well-done job in Angel. Uh, you haven't seen that one yet, I don't think. It's basically, it's about a high school girl by day. She's a top high school, and she's a Hollywood hooker by night. And there's like a, a serial killer going around killing killing prostitutes, and she's got this family, the street family, uh, and John Deal plays the serial killer, and it's almost a silent role. He almost doesn't speak almost all through the film till the end, but it's really really good. And he's in this one here as well. Let's see if I can see him here. We have two questions. Uh, it, it really depends when, with, when it comes to special features on Code Red. Some have great special features, like this one here doesn't have a lot. It's got a, a brand new scan of it. Uh, Code Red tends to go towards the, uh, they'll, they'll work more on like the getting a, a good scan rather than they will on getting like uh, a lot of features on some of the stuff here. Uh, a lot of their stuff, uh, so a lot of their stuff is region free. Some will be locked, uh, some won't. If I see any that aren't locked, I'll, I'll mention them. We have another question um, <clears throat> by Baby Herman. Would you recommend that Puppet Master Collection for fifty dollars as part of the full moon sale? Oh, yeah, for fifty bucks, yeah. The Puppet Master, like, you get a lot of good stuff. You're a Puppet Master fan. You, yeah. You're a Puppet Master fan. That's you're lucky that my Puppet Master fan. fanatic is here. Uh, my uh, my daughter too is also a Puppet Master fanatic, yeah, even more so. The <clears throat> big, the, like big on Puppet Master. But Bigger I, than anybody I've I know. Seen, like them all. And yeah, like the first five for sure are solid. Uh, like and the Pop Master box set, it's, it's going to have like all the features there. You as well, you're going to get your you're going to get your video zones. Video zones are really fun. Uh, back before features and stuff came around, um, the uh, pu they would have like on the on the end of VHS tapes, a full moon VHS tapes, they'd have like something called a video zone, and it would have like uh, it would have like trailers on there, and they'd have like short making ofs, and they'd be talking with people about other films that were coming out. At least right, he was on the shield. But still, he's a killer in, in a in that movie, so that's. If you've seen Puppet Master, you should definitely see Puppet Master. Yeah, I, I would strongly movie. recommend it. It depends on the film. Like some of these here yeah, okay. it, it, have great it really features. It depends on the film. Yeah. But like, oh, no, I meant like in the feature wise. <laughs> the Puppet Masters, are, are, they're fun anyway. Like even the bad ones are fun. So see that there. So look how many features are on that, on that one right there. <clears throat> Not a problem. I hope you like them. Uh, now, another thing that I got to say about, about the uh, Puppet Master series is are you a fan of The Room? Have you ever seen The Room? <clears throat> or have you heard of The Room? There's a reason I'm saying this. Do you know the reason? No. All right. So in one of the... Uh, <laughs> I try to watch movies like at least one or two a day. Uh, but I just, I'm a sponge for like movie information. It's weird that way. <clears throat> What's the connection with The Room? AME? Well, it's this. The one of the stars of The Room, not the main star, uh, but the one that plays his friend. Uh, it was, Mark. Mark, yeah. Hey, Ma. You know Mark? So he is actually, uh, what's his name again in the, in the Puppet Master movies? The, the main, the, the guy that makes puppets. Toulon, right? Toulon, yeah. He plays young Andre Toulon in one of the films. I'm not wait, joking. Really? Go check it out. Wait, wait. Is that the, the, guy? One, is that <clears throat> the one like... Blonde when, guy. The, the blonde in the, in the really old one where like he, the, the guy, like the, with the sick kid? Uh, I don't know if it's that one. He's like he's in one of the Nazi ones, one of the Nazi ones, later Nazi ones. Not oh. not not in the late late ones, but oh, in the okay. earlier ones. So yes, uh, Mark 
plays young Andre Talon. Did you know that? You gotta, no, you gotta look it up I now. Never so. read that <clears throat> yeah, he, see, back in the so, Tommy Wiseau was really kind of enamored, like with the fact that his friend uh, was actually got got to be in a big movie, like in a Puppet Master movie, as an elite type of role. So definitely check that out. You're tatting me up. <laughs> I love that movie. Oh my god, it's so good. <clears throat> I reference that like I have it there. <laughs> at least four times a week. Do you know he's supposed to be a vampire in the film version, but he changed it? Wait, but, really? Yes. Oh my god. With a flying car or something like that. Okay, so this is actually a really good film. Um, I don't think it. It's tense and stuff. Recent band the killer is a little bit iffy, but, but it's actually a fun film. That is hide and go shriek. So this is set at a, I think it's at a, not a mall, but like a store, uh, late at night. I like the room, like that. that, that. Uh, so, did you? I hope did you see the Ginger Dead Man film series? I think so. You poor person. Like the first couple are good, but it gets really bad. How many are there? Too many. There's the Ginger Dead versus the Evil Bong. Please don't watch that. Uh, <laughs> Hide and Go Shriek. Great film. Um, you know, it's got like the director, Skip Skolnick. That's his name. Uh, I think he worked on Buffy in that too, actually. Uh, there's an interview with him on here with actor Jeff Levine, producer Dimitri Vellard, and some bonus unrated scenes that were cut out of the R rated version. Uh, this movie, I think, was put out as well by 88 Films in the UK. So if you're in the UK, you can probably get it there as well. Well, there's more than three that they're doing about, unfortunately, because there's also, after the third one, they do a Ginger Dead versus the versus Evil Bong. Stay away from it. Well, Room with Brie Larson's an actual good film, like, that won awards. Uh, but uh, <clears throat> The Room is, is fun. The Room's an experience. This is one of my favorites. You're not watching this one. This was way too much nudity in it. Uh, <laughs> but uh, this... For reference, I'm almost 20. <laughs> Still, uh, this is Black Candles. Uh, if anybody recently picked up Edge of the Axe or Daily Manor or they picked up the Jose Larraz box set that came out from Arrow Video, this is another movie from Jose Larraz. Uh, Jose Larraz is a, uh, I think, Spanish director. The Room, yeah, it's kind of like Things, except Things is more painful. Things is way more painful. Remember things? The one I made you watch? You and Mimi? You made me watch all the ones that I The one where, hey, had. let's have, uh, let's get some sandwiches. He comes with the bread sandwiches. Puts the sweater in the bread sandwiches and like. Oh. And there's little creatures and stuff. And, uh, oh. So this is a really fun film. Uh, now, if you don't mind almost complete nudity throughout your entire film, Oh, you're gonna like this film. Uh, it, it's 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 a fun little film. There's uh, it's a Satanistic Satan film. Uh, this one is English dub. See, the thing is, Ragman. Um, unfortunately uh, for me, I like the I like subtitling better. I, I prefer subtitling over over dubbing. Uh, I I like doubling like Godzilla movies and stuff like that sometimes, like the cheesier stuff. Uh, the dubbing is actually pretty good for this one here. It's kind of fun, but uh, Code Red is like really don't like. Uh, like put subtitling. This one here actually is what I'd say was one of the earlier ones. No, not too early. Actually, this is eighty-two. Uh, this, this see this uh, kind of like evil-looking goat creature. Uh, that will be in the film. It's not a real goat or anything like that. It's like somebody dressed up like a looks like somebody's rich calf. Is he like Jess Franco? Uh, no, like Jose Larraz. Yes, like in a way of like is there is is it gonna be exploitation that type of stuff? Uh, that's Jess Franco like he's not gonna he doesn't go into like Jess Franco made hardcore films as well and uh he made sent ones with with hardcore inserts like female vampire uh with Alina Romay doesn't quite go there with that but the, yeah there's, it's an exploitive film there's a lot of exploitation stuff uh, and Jose Larraz is a really good director uh some of his later so Deadly Manor is probably one of his lesser ones and that's actually still a good fun movie to watch but uh he would that was his last film that he made but a lot of his stuff, I, like camera work, really, really good. I'll share some Jose Larraz stuff. Maybe not that one, but maybe some of his other stuff. Vam yeah, vampires. Or, or say vampires. I'm going to say vampires. We'll go with that. Uh, that's in the box set, actually. 
So this movie here, you watch Black Mama, White I love Black Mama, White Mama. That movie goes in a direction I did not expect. Uh, Black Mama, White Mama is an, is an exploitation like a uh, film with, with Pam Greer. And uh, basically it is, a, it almost like the defiant ones, like, you know, uh, black person, white person, escape from prison, uh, you know, and they go on the run. But it goes in a really dark way. Oh, I love uh, Pedro. I'm not going to get his name right. I love Pedro. I'm going to call him Pedro. Vote for Pedro. Uh, but yes, I do like his work. The Forest. So if I show you this one. Oh. It doesn't feel like I have. It is not actually just a female version of the Defiant Ones. Not at all. Because it goes in a very different direction. Uh, it it doesn't go hard on on the race card aspect of, of, the, of the Defiant Ones. It goes... In a very in a more of like a, in a kind of like uh, they're very different and it's a and the ending is brutal for uh, for black mama white mama in a way that I didn't expect so I was actually super impressed when I saw that film uh, like the and almost like the roles are reversed type of thing so this movie by the way it's wonderfully bad it oh god uh, so. See, it's got one of the greatest covers. Look at this cover. When you buy the Sue Sadison store, like an all on silica cover. It's, I don't know. I can't trust anything anymore. You, you definitely can't trust this. this. See this movie? See this? See this really cool thing in this movie? Not in the film. Uh, there's, a, there's an old dude in a rocking, in a rocking chair. And uh, there's a, kind of a killer, which is good. Kind of. There's a killer. No, there's a killer. And, and there's like some ghostly people. But uh, yeah. It's really bad. It's really bad, but you'll love it. Here's a few that I don't even have opened yet because there was another sale. There's a sale on a certain director that I really, really like, and that is Sirius Santiago. He is a huge fan of Sirius Santiago. Uh, Sirius Santiago makes a lot of really kind of cool, cheesy, uh, action films. And, like, they're all, like, action and, like, usually cute girls and stuff. So here is Silk by Sirius Santiago. I actually really like this film. I really do. I love the cover. Like, the cover art is really well done. Now, this uh, is a code red one. This one, by the way, guys, this is region free. So if you wanted to buy this one, Silk, right here, it doesn't matter if you where you live, you can get it. It's ABC, so it's region free. ABC equals region free. Huh? 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 <clears throat> this was originally a Scorpion releasing one. So for people that don't know, they don't have a lot of code red. A third wolf man don't know this as well. Um, is that uh, code red... And Scorpion releasing the guys that the guy that runs Code Red is the brother of the guy that runs Scorpion releasing, and every once in a while, because the guy with Code Red has some certain issues that I won't get into too bad, uh, too much. But uh, his brother will, will, will like get movies for him, give him movies that he got. So this one here is actually an original. This one's on sale. Definitely picks those numbers. Cool, um, and it has the. Uh, is that winter? It is winter. She's a wrestler. Oh, okay. So, she did like certain Scorpion releasing ones under like, she did like some horror and action ones, and that's Winter. Uh, I think she was called something else in WWE, but I know her as Winter in, 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 uh, in TNA. Somebody me mentioned Heavy Metal? They thought they, he, someone asked if you've seen Heavy Metal and Heavy Metal 2000. Oh yeah, well Heavy Metal was, was done in Canada, so Canadian, it was like all the actors are, are uh, Canadian, the cast, like John Candy, people like that, right, from SCTV. Uh, and with a rock and soundtrack people like rush uh heavy metal is based on the magazine originally um but that magazine is actually based on a french magazine that my better half used to read when she was young way too young to read actually uh because it's like sci-fi new deal that type of stuff right it was called metal hurling which is the original like uh which is where heavy, heavy metal comes from i'm a huge heavy metal fan I used to read when i was a teenager i read it growing up uh heavy metal 2 was the kind of base, like strong on Julie Strain, the actress who's unfortunately passed away after suffering from dementia. Uh, gorgeous, gorgeous girl. And uh, it was a shame. Uh, but anyway, Silk. Great, great film. Love this stuff. I don't even have this one open, but I've seen this one before. So. This cover is ridiculous. <laughs> I love this cover. <laughs> so this is another Sirius Santiago film. Because I got to have me Sirius Santiago stuff. It is Sirius Santiago, right? Yes, it is. Oh, yeah. And Richard Norton. Uh, He's like an Australian actor uh, who did like a, oh, 
God, so many Cynthia Rothrock films. And some he's like, in one film he's like he's like her, her partner or cop, and the next film he's like brutally beating her up because he's a bad guy. So <laughs> he's in every almost all, all of her films. And he was the bad guy in uh, The Good Guy, Good Guy, which is a Jackie Chan film. So here he is, this is Equalizer 2000. This is one of Roger Corman's post-nuke collection. I love this when they have banners like this, actually. You gotta love this cover. Let's look how much stuff's going on. He's got the, the biggest, most ridiculous gun. There's like a girl behind him. Uh, there's like a, there's a car chase going on in the background. There's fire everywhere. How can you not love this cover? Just look at this, guys. Look how much stuff's going on here. It's it crazy. Like a spoof. <laughs> it's not. Actually, and the gun is actually re like he does. Like the Equalizer 2000 is this big gun. It's like this huge gun. Uh, this is the director's cut of version. A film on camera interview with the writer and actor of the film, Frederick Bailey. Uh, of the girl from Maniac. I don't think so. Let's see who's starting this one here. Uh, Corn Whale. Uh, so you can check it out. Robert Patrick. Oh, Robert Patrick's in this. Yeah, the guy from Terminator 2. Oh. The trailer for it is hilariously fun. Another of the post new collections coming up, guys. I got three of these, I think. So next up is the sisterhood, because nothing says like strong female empowerment like girls in, in like skimpy clothing. Uh, so <laughs> Roger Corman's post Nick collection, <laughs> yeah, serious Santiago's yeah, the sisterhood. Again, there's an interview with Re with Rebecca Holden, who's one of the stars of the film. Uh, Chuck Wagner's in this one as well. Lynn Holly Johnson. Uh, th those are names. <laughs> yeah, I'm yeah. Sure they are. No names like people. Uh, I love these covers. These are awesome. Look at this cover. You got the girls, and there's like a car like flipped None over. Look like real movies. Like. <laughs> there's like horses going on. They're on their horses. How can you not love this? Chris is me clothing. Have the power. Yeah, you're tr that is so true. All three of these are nine ninety eight right now on Screen Archives. Greg, thank you so much for letting people know that. So if you're a fan and you want some like cool cheesy action stuff, and you just want to have a good time, Sierra Santiago, for me, in a way, I'll say he always delivers. I've seen. Some people have gone have gone away from the video. I think they're gone to order Sarah Santiago films. I actually do think they are. I did see the TV series, yes. You actually have four of them in your Oh, I do. And I love the next cover. Look at this. Look, just look at this. Oh, my God. <laughs> Wheels of Fire. Another Roger Poor Corman's. Roger Corman's. Roger Corman's post new collection. Uh, wow, it was a big it was a cast. There a lot of people. Actually, this is a fun film. I remember this one. Uh, so, interview with writer Frederick Bailey, interview with the production supervisor, Clark Henriksen. And um, the best feature, I love the way that it says, like, like it's, it's a... <laughs> so, and there's another feature. Guess what else it has? Yeah. Not just interviews. Two different trailers. Oh, my God. Two trailers. Well, uh, really, it's right, right, right there. So, two different trailers. Like, they're not the same. Don't think they're the same trailer. They're not the same trailer. They're different trailers. What, what if it was? What if it said two of the same <laughs> and you get the, trailer? And you're like, whoa, I like this movie, but there's but those trailers are too similar. I'm sending it back type of thing. That can happen. <laughs> so anyway, Wheels of Fire is a really fun film. I actually really enjoy this one. Um, as you see, these aren't even open. Like, I've seen these movies so many times before. When I, I, uh, I bought these, I just knew that I wanted to have them. I know my better half loves this stuff. I think you'd like these too. And next up, look at another fantastic cover. This one's not as, like, weird. It's Dune Warriors. <laughs> that picture of David Carradine isn't as weird. It's my favorite of the three. Well, there's four. This is the fourth one. Uh, I like Wheels of Fire. Are you fan of bad in any fan? I thought it was a fun one. Uh, I actually like them all. I really do. I think they're cheesy fun. Uh, and uh, they're, not, they're nothing you're ever going to take seriously. What movie have I seen more than any other? Uh, Black Christmas is definitely up there. That's my favorite movie of all time. You know that. Yeah. Uh, Silent Night, Deadly Night, one and two. I watch those a lot. Uh, Christmas horror. I really like Christmas, like Christmas horror stuff. Mm -hmm. Christmas Eve, I watch a few times. Oh, this one we don't have. Ah, oh, see any fans? See ya. Look at the Dune Warrior. It's got David Carradine. Who else is in this one here? Also has Rick Hill in here as well. So again, another serious Santiago one. And it, and it is a Katrina or winter one, and uh, just because it's got her on there. And just look, you can see the back right there. I'm pretty sure this is the one where, if you like, 
where they go. And uh, I would actually, I'm kind of interested in seeing the new Black Christmas. I, I When people say they don't like it, I wonder why. Uh, <clears throat> it was definitely not related to the Dune series. Uh, there's Dunes, there's sand dunes in it. Uh, was Dune made by Joe Dworsky? Actually, no. Uh, there was, uh, Dune was originally made by David Lynch. There was a, a Joe Dworsky version of Dune that he had been working on, and there's a great documentary called Joe Dworsky's Dune, which you really, really should check out. Uh, and so that was never released. The script went around Hollywood. Uh, watch the documentary, Javid. I really strongly advise it because a lot of horror movies, a lot of sci-fi movies that came out afterwards, they took a lot from the script. It's a really great documentary. Um, but Dune Warriors, look, it's got David Carradine. And how how can you go wrong with David Carradine? Yeah, this is the one where, where I'm pretty sure they're at like this. Uh, they go to this like small like towns, like the post-apocalyptic, of course, thing. And uh, and they're kind of like trying to like protect the town because there's there's this like this band, this renegade group that are coming into like different towns, pretty much like like taking what they want and going again. I I'm I know 100 percent I prefer to the 2006 one because that ain't a very good movie. Sadly, guys, we are out of the uh, of the. Of the post nuke ones, but still got a few more. <laughs> I, I promise you, Javid, I will do the documentary episode. Maybe do that while I'm here, or you're here. Oh, yeah. Aha! Uh -huh. Howard Cinema just purchased Castle Freak and all the subspecies movies. I love the subspecies films. Oh, the first one especially. The mummy character really pissed me off. This is The Devastators. This is another kind of cheesy fun action film, which they'd put a lot of these out. And I bought this at the same time that I bought the Serio Santiago one, so you can tell it's not even opened. Uh, again, it is another winter one. A w interview with star Terrence O'Hara and fun facts and trivia. So if, if I'm correct, uh, every one of these well, that shows her on the back, she usually does a uh, an opening and uh, and a uh, and an ending for the film. Free laser blast action figure. That is cool. Look at this. Look how cool that is. So if anybody wants to buy me some full moon stuff, send it my way. Feel free to do so. Worth a shot. <clears throat> All right. Next up is one of the most brutal. This is a Western, but it's a very different Western. It's a Spanish Western. And it's gory and brutal and kind of cool. So if you guys like your Westerns, if you like Italian Westerns and you like gory Westerns, and like the one I just had before, it was The Devastator. They do have a, a few, definitely a few horror titles. It's just I don't have a lot of their horror titles. But we'll be saying more of those. Don't worry. Uh, is Cutthroat's Nine, which is kind of a Western film, which is a Western film, but does have a bit of horror to it. There's like definitely some gore. Um, it's a, a Spanish Western. Uh, basically, it's about these uh, uh, these uh, criminals who are looking for gold, and they kidnap this girl. It's it's anyway. See it. It's a really good film. I actually really like this one. Uh, no features on this one, unfortunately. Not like the other ones. Uh, every one of those post new ones have features. So, you ready for horror? So, this is Sweet 16. I actually really love it. Have you ever seen this one? Because um, if not, maybe this one I might maybe. show you. So, it's a slasher film. It is a murder mystery. Oh, it's extremely gory, Greg. Uh, this one not, though. <laughs> uh, it actually stars Dana Kimmel. And if that name sounds familiar, she was the star of Friday the 13th, Part 3. Uh, the one where he gets his hockey mask. So yeah, she's the star of that one. There's actually a few big actors in this one here. Uh, Bo Hopkins is in this one. Susan Strasberg's in this movie. Patrick McNee is in the film. Uh, it is actually a really kind of cool little little one. It's, it's kind of you know slightly tamer, but uh, it's a good like kind of early '80s slasher film. I definitely recommend it. Love this cover. If you're in the UK, 88 Films put this out as well. But if you want this release, this release is region free, and I uh, gotta gotta love that when they're region free. Look at this cover. Isn't this a great cover, though? It is actually pretty good. Like, it stands out. It's just... If you saw this on a, you know, if you are you're going to see, like, rent a movie, you'd, you'd rent it. If you're in a movie store and you saw this, you'd probably buy it. If you're, like, a slasher fan like me and you like this stuff. So next is up is one of, one of my favorite... This is my favorite Diodato film. Um, and one of my... This is a film that I watched a lot. So... And this one also has a great cover, by the way. Look at this cover. 
That is actually really cool. So this is house on the edge of the park. I think Dave Carradine made a better. I don't. Nah, I'm not sure about that, <laughs> but uh, I like Dave Carradine. Uh, but uh, House on the Edge of the Park was is a Gregorio Diodato film. Uh, there is a. Uh, it has David Hess, who's famous for you know being the the sleazy guy. It's usually like a killer rapist character that he plays in a lot of his movies. He directed the movie uh, Twelve Good Night, uh, but he's the again he's a sleazy rapist killer in this one here. As he takes a whole like a like group of people hostage, sort of. Uh, now. Fun fact that David Hess did actually, rest in peace David Hess, didn't like to talk about a lot, is that there's a, um, a scene, it's a brutal rape sequence at the beginning of this film where he rapes, kills this girl. That's his wife in real life. Oh. <laughs> yeah, so, so uh, yeah, so that's his, uh, that's his wife. He, he gets upset. If anybody, like, they're interviewing him and somebody says, so your wife was in that scene, he, he, he gets mad. And Hess is a big guy. You, don't, you, didn't, you didn't want to get, get Hess mad. Uh, what's cool about Hess is like aside from doing this he was like a writer he did he was a musician as well he was a painter he was kind of a renaissance man people didn't know that because he played like this you know he's like this Italian guy and he with the curly hair and he plays like these kind of series right there see uh, plays kind of like these sleazier roles so you wouldn't expect it of him but uh, it's actually this is a good one too House on the Edge of the Park I had I got the Shriek Show edition with like three films on it but I, I had had this one great film love the cover to this by the way uh, some great features on her as well. We got an on-camera interview with David Hess. I think this is where he mentioned it, and he actually gets upset. Uh, John Morgan's and Carolyn Mardock, uh, Ruggiero Diodato, the interview director, at the director's interview on this. He, I know he did. Like that's the thing. But he was really nice, and I actually got to speak to David Hess on Facebook actually before. Uh, like it must have been a few months before he passed. Um, really nice guy. Really accessible. <clears throat> Cutthroat's Nine was one that was hard. Was a hard. Yeah, actually, that's been out of print a couple times. Uh, Code Red may put it back again. Code Red's out of print for good doesn't mean always out of print for good. If they see there's a market there for it, those out of print ones can, can come back in. I've seen that a lot, actually, with Code Red. And I had the very first Code Red uh, one, one with the number one. And that's the last. Yeah, and I don't think I watched this one, actually. <laughs> I gotta watch it. Maria, that's her other name, Maria. Because she plays Winter on like. So, and it is the electric chair. They are associated with the, with the label I don't like. Yeah, but you know who, who they are. Uh, there's a, a guy that runs his, his video company, like a wrestling show, and he's the heel. I'll tell you about it later. <laughs> but uh, he actually was like a, like an amateur, like not an amateur wrestler, as a field right wrestler, but like an amateur prof professional wrestler. Okay. <laughs> yeah, DFE. Maybe they gotten better, I don't know, but their early tactics really peeved me off. So this is the electric chair. Again, another one by uh, Maria. Maria Canales? It can't be Maria Canales. It, maybe that's Maria Canales, though. No, no, it can't be. Uh, the guy that made Axe. I heard Dark Force were kind of dodgy. I don't know myself, so that's the, you know I'm just going by some of the stuff that he said on online and on his Facebook page and stuff like that that really kind of like got to me. But that's just me, to, you know. I try to separate the movies from the company. It's just that one really, it kind of got under my skin, you know, type of thing. Okay. The Electric Chair. It's a movie about an electric chair. <laughs> I don't remember. I'm like. Are you going to spit take on that one? Uh, Almost. Let's read it. Why don't we? Looks up the cover. Yeah. It's not the best cover. I'll tell you that much right now. The late director J.G. Patterson c creates a heart-pounding murder shocker. In a small dead in town, the murder of an innocent couple leads to a to police detective work. It usually does. Uh, a newspaper seeking clues in some intense courtroom drama to find out who committed the grisly murders. L young local Reverend Samuel Moss is... Married to a lady older than him. But he falls for a local troubled lady, Marilyn. And the scandal in the town begins. When the, mar when the young couple is found brutally murdered, the police cannot make the murder pass since... Cannot make this murder pass? Okay. Since the killing was so grisly. Oh, yeah. So if the killing wouldn't have been grisly, <laughs> that's okay. This murder's all right. Like, because the murder's <laughs> grisly. Hey, this murder's grisly. We're going to have to catch him. That murder over there... 
he was clean. He, he was clean. He did a good job. Like, That's precision. A solid murder. Solid murder. You get, you get, you get a pass. He, he could be there, like you know, like you put it on a tarp and everything. That guy gets a pass. But this murder was grisly, so you gotta catch him. Uh, okay, where are we at? Uh, who did it? I don't know. Was it Ref <laughs> Reverend Moss's jealous wife? Was it his mentally insane brother-in-law, Crazy Bill? <laughs> Crazy Bill. Uh, I love that. I love. That. I gotta watch. We gotta watch this movie. Uh, <laughs> uh, or maybe it was corrupt, gay, Ganu clone. Attorney Klein. Oh, what the f hell is this? Or could it be the number one suspect, Moss Cooper, played by the director, or even the mis oh, oh and yet uh, no, okay, or even the mysterious man in the courtroom, Larry Drake, Larry, Dr. Giggles, Larry, yeah, Dr. <laughs> Dr. Giggles, Larry Drake. This electrifying movie was released on 42nd Street. What a shocker! Under several different titles, <laughs> makes you. If he didn't get you with the electric chair title, get you one. What you know. I'll, Say somebody goes in and doesn't like the movie. Oh, screw this movie. I'm not watching Electric Chair. I'm going to go over and watch that movie over there. And he goes in. Mother <laughs> It's the same damn film. Oh, my God. Curse you. <laughs> Strap in and prepare to get shocked. Get it? This is the longer director's cut. The only surviving longer director's cut. Who directed this again? Pat, Pat Patterson. That's the name of the guy from wrestling. You know, Pat, Pat like Jared Briscoe. It's not him, but that's oh, that's the same name, Pat yeah, Patterson. Yeah. So that is my Code Red collection. That's a complete collection. How many titles there? Can you count them? Because uh, sometimes people ask me at the end, like, how many titles are? Twenty-five. Twenty-five. A quarter of a hundred. Do I have the headless? I do not have the headless size. Give, there you go. You can buy Code Red on Screen Archives Entertainment. Uh, you can also buy Code Red on Ronin Flix. Uh, if you're in Canada, I find Screen Archives are a lot better. Uh, like I haven't really done for like price-wise. Now, one thing I will say is that they will try and scare you. I'm not even joking. Screen Archives, you'll be ordering your stuff from Screen Archives, and they'll say they'll have like this this big like message and like yellow or red or come up say. You know, we cannot assure that you're going to get these movies if you don't pay this $40 like fee for like shipping. I never paid $40 for shipping from Screen Archives. I usually get them within three to four days, and I and I live in Canada. They're really, really good. Do 88 films have Code Red films in the UK? They don't have Code Red, but there's like 80 films. Yeah, they do have some Code Red releases, like Sweet 16 stuff like that. I think there's actually a couple features on Sweet 16 the 88 films version that aren't on Code Red, and I like Sweet 16 enough that I would pick it up. So, what do you think? I mean... I have all the Code Red videos. Is this the Code Readiest? Yeah, I guess. Hey, Will. Uh, someone said that the guy who played Napoleon Dynamite is going to be like Terminator 7. I like that. Uh, uh, Napoleon Diamond's cool. It's fun. I'm, I'm not sure if it's like I one. I can, it. Really? It's yeah. I like. I know it's a classic, but I don't think I've ever seen it. So in those things, like everyone just assumes you've seen, and you're like, uh huh. Yeah. <laughs> you're like, you you. Like, that's like you know get the like, you've seen you see you must have seen Casablanca. Um, yeah, I have. But uh, uh but imagine if you had, and you're like, yeah. Yeah, I uh, or like you must have seen Gone with the Wind, and and, and say if someone hasn't seen it. I love Gone with the Wind. It's like, it's a great action film. Uh, well, it definitely happens. So this is our, this is a short question time. I want to talk about anything before I end up going, because this is going to be a shorter video. In case you want to watch something tonight. Yes. But if everything is quiet. <laughs> I I came in. I came in today. Yeah. So I am oh. still feeling the effects of travel. Well, the last two films I watched. What last film you watched? Oh, jeez. Um, I know mine. I don't know actually. I gotta think about this. Okay, I watched. Um, 
I think the last one I watched was Inuyashiki, and before that, I think it was a common Rider movie. V3, I think? They're both Japanese films. We did, for, for my sister's like, birthday month, we watched Japanese films for like I watched one Japanese film. I have been recently. to Morocco when I was 13. Yep. It has been seven years. You have to go. I it's a bit there. time to go again. I would love to go back. It's really great. I've seen Bloodstockers, 1976. Uh, actually, I don't think I have, actually. I've seen it in Soon the Darkness. It sounds familiar, but I don't remember it. Uh, that's recently came out. Was Kino put it in Soon the Darkness? Uh, Bloodstockers, I don't remember either. If I've seen it, I don't remember it. Uh, now, a lot of times, I'll, I'll, there, I'll look at a movie and I'll look at the cover and it won't ring any bells, and I'll put it on and I'll be like, oh, that movie. Uh, that happens. When you watch a lot of movies, that tends to happen a lot. Uh, but uh, especially if you're watching movies. Like when I was a kid, and I, was, I would rent movies all the time. So needless to say, I would like to watch movies over and over again. Sometimes you just, you just forget them. Um, or you forget that you saw them because you know, you may they may have not left an impression. Or you've seen so many other movies, you just don't remember everything. Yeah. But uh, but yeah, uh, I watched Unibaba recently. Uh, uh, that's in Morocco now, actually. Uh, but I watched it on TV, and I watched uh, what was that? I watched My Bloody Valentine, a theatrical cut. I watched the unrated cut. And there's something else I watched, like this, even more recent than that, and I can't remember what it is. It was like a. So I think it might have been a Shutter film. One of the Shutter releases, actually. You like Corinico more? Ah. Uh, Corinico is more horror. Uh, but uh, Unibaba just like hits me harder. The it's, it's the lyricalness of the uh, of the cinematography and the way that's done. What we got here? We're getting the Jodorowsky arrow, arrow set. Eventually, uh, not yet though. I've seen the Napoleon Dumb animated series. I haven't. Oh, Doctor! I love Doctor Wolfie. Do I have the female comic Scorpion set? I do not. But if you want to send it my way, I'll gladly accept. <laughs> uh, no, I don't have it. Uh, the first home video released from Diabali Freakmaker with Donald Pleasance looks good. So I, I've seen that, but I don't remember it. Any opinion on Summer of Fear? Uh, are you talking about? If you're ta Summer of Fear, uh, are we talking about the? Uh, is it a newer film? We're talking about the old Linda Blair one. That was done uh, back in the day, you know. It was like a, almost like a TV film. Wes Craven. Oh, actually, I like that one back in the day. If that's, that's if you're talking about the Wes Craven one, I actually did like it. I, I like most of this. Uh, Wes Craven is one of those guys, you know, uh, that I, that I do like. And Linda Blair, I had a big crush on Linda Blair when I was a kid. Like, she, uh, especially Savage Streets. Have you seen Savage Streets? It's a revenge movie. You, like you know how you're talking about how like you see like you just don't remember seeing movies up. There is exactly like literally that. dozens of movies that I do not remember seeing because I just watched them in the background like while you were watching them as a kid. I know that your favorite is still always going to be Turn of the Corner. I hate. <laughs> I will fight you about that. <laughs> I got one uh, once I had my kids over uh, and we decided I decided hey let's watch Turn of the Corner because they hadn't seen it. So I put on Turn in the Corner. I think I fell asleep, right? Yeah, you do this all the time. You're like, let's watch this terrible movie. And then, I'm just going to I didn't I don't traumatize you with the worst thing your eyeballs will ever lay upon and then I'm just going to fall asleep 10 minutes in and I'll sleep <laughs> through the whole thing. Uh, do I think there'll be any more physical release of Korean films after Parasites win? Uh, I do uh, think I think there'll be a lot more uh, releases. I hope so. Uh, like Korean releases because of that actually and a lot more foreign releases in general uh, Parasite deserved the win too uh, I, I will fight anybody on that one I haven't seen Parasite yet I'm supposed to see it for my field course actually my, oh really? yeah my, two, my professor was like my professor was like it's out in theaters go watch it it's, it's by it's the guy who did the host right let's look at like the monster movie the host and oh, did a really? few films yeah. uh, Serpent in the Rainbow and Deadly Friend are underrated Craven flicks the most underrated Craven flick for me is uh, Deadly Blessings uh, I think it's not Deadly Blessings which is a uh, great cast, by the way. And, but he, even he, like, is really big on it. But I actually really like it. It's this really cool film. I got the Arrow release of it. 
And uh, I got the screw. I might have the screen factory release too. I'm, I'm not sure if I got both releases as well. What's my thoughts on new CGI Mirror movie? I haven't seen it, so I don't know. But yeah, Parasite is actually coming out by Criterion. Criterion are doing it. Really? Yeah, they both. So they're doing that film, and they're doing one of his early films as well. So they're doing two okay. of his movies. Put them two of them, two of them out. I know you like some of the Criterion stuff because you used to like. You used to really want when you were a kid. You used to really want the Charlie Chaplin films. I did. I remember that. And you're like, oh, I want this Charlie Chaplin film. I love Charlie Chaplin. Remembers a murder. Yeah, that's the one. Thanks, Greg. <laughs> so, I guess what's smart? You only made it through 20 minutes, so Children of the Corn turned it off. You are lucky. <laughs> I'll be honest, Andy, and I, I, I'll, be, I'll be blunt. I don't think the joke deserved it. I think it was the least deserving of the films that were there. And, and, and it beca I think it deserved best actor. Joaquin Phoenix, fantastic acting in the role. But it's a, a kind of a been there, done that type for me. Like Everybody's different. It was a been there, done that type of thing for me. Uh, <clears throat> I'd seen, I'd, I felt like I'd seen it before. I felt like I'd seen it better, but I uh, I thought that his performance was kick-ass in the film, and he 110% deserved the award. I would have been upset if it won, actually, uh, because I don't think, as a film, I saw King of Comedy before. I saw Taxi Driver. This was a good mesh up of both of those, and on its own, like, I'm, I'm going to get down with this one. By the way, I'm sorry, uh, but I just didn't really get into it. Uh, but... Uh, but it was it was an okay it was a good film for what it was it just it wasn't an academy film and that's why there's different there's so many movies that come out because there's a different movie for everybody right yeah so it's okay we don't like saying film. <laughs> but that's the reason I'm gonna give you the reasoning my favorite horror film I look like my son with that with that hair well yeah probably <laughs> Well, you'll keep your hair, though, because you're... Yeah, probably. So, your grandfather's got hair, so... Yeah. So, what's your favorite horror film? My... Is it what I think it is? Okay. It, you, so, for a long time, I would have said Dolls. <gasps> it's changed? I don't know anymore. <gasps> dolls was... Because, okay, so I have, lessons. like, an obsession with Dolls. I loved that movie so much. Um, I still love it. It's so good. It's still definitely one of my favorites, but I don't know. Black if it's Christmas. My absolute favorite is it Black anymore. Christmas? No, it's not Black Christmas. I don't know if it is anymore because I've seen a lot of really good horror movies. Anything better than Dolls, though? But I think, in some, I think in some ways, a lot of movies that I've seen are better than Dolls, like, but not in all of them. The Shining. I wouldn't put The Shining as my favorite, like. Uh, but it was a good movie. Uh, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood was, was my runner-up after Parasite, actually. actually. So I, that, that's my thoughts. I really, so we ran that really, one. really loved Train to Busan. Train to Busan was a good film. It's an, it's an incredible film. I'm sure so eventually cool. they'll remake it because they're worried people can't read subtitles or something like that. I hope they don't. They will. You know the they are. It's Hollywood, man. They're gonna they're gonna, there's going to be a sequel coming out soon, this year, I think. And... A lot, what a lot of people don't know is that there was like a short animated film like companion to it called Soul Station. That's actually on Shutter, I think. It is really good. It's like way darker than yeah, Train I know. to Busan. Way more brutal. But still like really good. I think Train to Busan is honestly probably a perfect film. Besides like minor things that don't make sense. Dolls like, is pretty perfect though. Dolls is pretty perfect but the thing is like I think it's and like, the teddy bear scene. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. I Train think it's like two have a giant teddy bear. It's two different types of film, and it's two different time periods. Like dolls is like the best, like, pr like, for like the the previous period, and like in in the modern period, it's like I'm I'm really into Train to Busan. Like I'm I'm really into it. Oh, he mentioned dolls before, and he mentioned the the train to the sound like Busan. animation. Busan. What did they say? Busan. 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 What's the uh, sequel thing? What's it called again? The sequel or the... The sequel. 
Train to do so. <laughs> Train to Wait, do so. the sequel or the companion short film? The companion short film. We'll okay, that. the companion short film is called Soul Station. Soul Station. Favorite horror film is Apollo 18. <laughs> Dolls. Dolls is excellent. Everybody needs to see Dolls because gigantic teddy bear. Ripping the person so many apart. Yeah, actually. It's Great scene. Good. Yeah, oh, Dolls is a Stuart Gordon film. Train to Busan, Busan is on Shutter, and I think the companion one is on Shutter as well, right? I don't know. I don't remember. Uh, I think so, but it's really... It's do you guys watch Shutter at the house? You know, I used to have my Shutter. I don't know. Okay. We don't. Because it's, it's up again now, by the way. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. My Shutter account was gone for a bit. I uh, had to switch cards. Had to get a new card. Was it. Any other questions before we go? I can never do the rock thing. Both eyebrows go up at the same time. I can't do it. I can do like... Oh, that's not fair. <laughs> you... <laughs> I got, I loosened your eyebrow for you. <laughs> that's not even work. Okay, guys, thank you so much for coming here tonight. I am Aaron. This is my son, Wes. This is the movie library, and you, you guys, are the cult of cinema. Thank you so much for coming in and joining us tonight and making it rock. It was an awesome evening. I had a great time here, and uh, I will see you here soon. And it is time for tea. I got my time for tea thing over there from Wes. Mm, yes, the thing I got. We got to check on that like, blockbuster game after, too, see how many people you need to play it and stuff like that. I think it's like you need a bit, which was the, the thing I was worried about. <laughs>